My dear students, we have an opportunity to pose several questions to His Excellency, uh, Secretary General. So uh, I decided to give three questions from this side and three from the other side. So, Jert, Akitam Kharim Daswas. I go, uh, yes, a lady with uh, yellow, uh, yellow hello. sleeves. <laughs> hello, my name is uh, Tala Magilanova. I'm a student of Sokhumi State University. First of all, I have to extend my appreciation to NATO's firm support of uh, Georgia's territorial integrity and uh, pursuing the non-recognition policy. At the same time, UN has made a resolution on the dignified return of IDPs to their homes. And in your opinion, uh, to what extent does the international pressure influence and will influence the um, uh, decision making in Kremlin in this regard? Thank you. In the Kremlin? I don't know. <laughs> uh, very often, I don't understand the decision making uh, in the Kremlin. Honestly speaking, I, I think much thinking in the Kremlin is still impacted by very old fashioned Cold War philosophy. I have to say that. I say that despite the fact that I'm very much in favor of uh, developing a strong partnership and a strong cooperation between uh, Russia and, and NATO. As you may know, we have, to back in 2002, uh, established a special NATO-Russia Council. Um, and um, in, in, uh, within that council, we have a dialogue uh, with uh, Russia and we have moved forward uh, on a number of uh, practical um, cooperation uh, issues. Um, I think one of the highlights uh, was the NATO-Russia summit meeting in, in Lisbon in November 2010. At that meeting, we declared that it's our intention to develop a true strategic partnership between NATO uh, and uh, Russia. Uh, we have invited Russia to cooperate on missile defense, but so far we haven't uh, received a positive uh, response. I think it would be of mutual interest uh, to cooperate on that. Um, sometimes we uh, listen to very harsh rhetorics uh, from, from the Russian uh, side. All this just to, to, to tell you that I'm not able to answer your question about uh, the decision-making process uh, in the Kremlin, uh, but it's my ambition as Secretary General of NATO to move forward uh, to, to further improve uh, the relationship uh, between Russia uh, and NATO. I think that would be to the benefit uh, of uh, Euro-Atlantic uh, security. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, yeah, okay. Afterwards. Yeah. Um, welcome, Mr. Secretary General. Now, I'm Tamara Lagrashvili, Caucasus University, School of Humanities. It's a great honor for us to host you here in Tbilisi. Uh, as it's known, Georgian military forces are currently located in the most hazardous conflict zone, that is, respectively, Helmand Province, and are taking a very important part in struggling against international terrorism. As you already mentioned recently, unfortunately, there have been many casualties, which cause somehow very serious concern in our society. I want you to ask such kinds of questions. How would you evaluate the participation and somehow the performance of Georgian soldiers to the ISAF operation? Thanks. We highly appreciate uh, the very significant uh, Georgian contribution to uh, the ISAF combat mission uh, in Afghanistan. You have been there for many years in the hotspot in the Helmand province without caveats. Um, your tr you can be very proud uh, of your uh, troops. They have really made a difference um, uh, in, in Afghanistan and it's also, thanks to their efforts, that we are now able uh, to, to move forward uh, and um, hand over more and more responsibility for the security to um, uh, the Afghan uh, security forces. 
Uh, on the 18th of June, I attended um, an event uh, in Kabul, a ceremony at which we handed over formally uh, lead responsibility uh, to the Afghans uh, for security all over uh, Afghanistan. Uh, we are still there uh, with our ISAF uh, combat mission, but gradually we will move into a supportive role. Uh, the Afghans will now uh, be in the lead. They will plan uh, operations. Um, and this is, this is a remarkable uh, milestone. Uh, and I thank uh, the, the Georgian troops and all the other troops uh, within our ISAF coalition uh, for all their efforts to achieve uh, that goal. And by the end uh, of 2014, uh, our ISAF combat mission will be completed. We will stop that mission. And from 2015, we will establish a new mission, a training mission, uh, which will be very different uh, from the ISAF combat mission. And I, I um, am grateful uh, for uh, the, the Georgian announcement uh, that Georgia will also contribute in a significant way uh, to uh, the training mission uh, after uh, 2014. And all that demonstrates a, a very strong Georgian commitment uh, to our uh, transatlantic relationship, but also uh, to international uh, peace and stability. Thank you. Uh, okay, lady, there, uh, we will turn to this side. Um, yes, hello. Again to this uh, side. Uh, yes, Hatia Kovali from the University of Georgia, Faculty of Political Science and International Relations. In the regard with Georgia's NATO relations, the Chicago Summit uh, Declaration with Georgia was well represented, stressed the importance of the uh, conductive free and fair elections, which was in 2012. So this was uh, mentioned like the uh, little test for Georgia and to uh, show its uh, democratic development. So about this, uh, President Obama said that Georgian citizens have set a regional and global example by conductive and competitive campaign, freely exercising their democratic rights and affirming their commitment to undertake a peaceful transfer of power. So I believe that upcoming presidential elections also will pass likewise successfully. Uh, I'm interested in your vision. How will this progress be further reflected in Georgia's NATO integration? Thank you very much. As I mentioned uh, in my speech uh, this morning, um, democratic credentials are a very important uh, element uh, in um, uh, fulfilling uh, the necessary requirements uh, to eventually become uh, a member of, of NATO. In that respect, it was a huge step forward um, that uh, the parliamentary elections uh, in October last year were conducted in a manner that is broadly uh, recognized as uh, free, fair, uh, transparent, and a reflection <clears throat> of the will uh, of uh, the Georgian uh, people. Afterwards, power was handed over uh, in a peaceful way, and obviously that, that should be taken for granted uh, in, in a mature democracy, but we also have to keep in mind that is actually the first time it has happened uh, in, in Georgia. That's why um, uh, the parliamentary elections and the peaceful handover of power last year were so significant uh, steps. Now we're looking forward to the presidential elections uh, in October uh, last year. I have discussed that issue uh, with um, uh, government representatives as well as representatives uh, of, of the opposition. And based on that, I feel confident that the presidential elections will be conducted in a manner that live up to the very highest uh, standards. And that will be yet another uh, very important uh, element uh, in Georgia's um, path uh, towards uh, a future membership uh, of NATO. But having said that, of course, these are, why, why while the, the democratic credentials are important, they are essential, um, the agenda is broader. 
and I have mentioned some of the issues today, such as reforms of the judiciary, um, uh, make sure that uh, your armed forces uh, live up uh, to the highest standards so that they can actually work and operate smoothly uh, in a smooth way uh, with um, uh, NATO uh, forces. So it's a real uh, broad uh, agenda. Uh, within the NATO Georgia Commission, uh, we, we cooperate uh, on all that and uh, NATO stands ready to assist Georgia in pursuing uh, all these uh, reforms. And the good news is that you have already uh, made a lot of uh, progress, um, and I feel confident that you will continue uh, to make progress. Thank you for good news. Uh, now, or there, this young lady. I'll give her the microphone, please. Yeah. In the process of building Georgian armed forces, serious significance is attached to the selection of uh, junior and medium level officers. And right now, Georgian officers are receiving education abroad from prestigious military institutions in different countries. For example, in Europe, we have George Marshall Center NATO Military College. I'm interested in your opinion. Is it necessary to raise a question to open the military university of the international level, whether it is timely uh, request? And how do you think will be in this another step forward which will bring Georgia close with the North Atlantic Alliance? Thank you very much. Hmm. As usual, I, if, if that's um, the purpose of your question, um, as, as usual, I'm not going to interfere with uh, domestic politics and domestic uh, decisions as, as to whether uh, you want to uh, open your universities uh, to foreigners or, or how. So that's, I, I mean, that's a national decision. But the first part uh, of, of your question, um, that um, uh, Georgian, um, uh, Georgian soldiers go abroad uh, to get uh, military education. I think that's an excellent idea. I mean, th that's, that's part of uh, being uh, an alliance, that's part of uh, having partnerships, uh, that contributes to um, improving uh, our ability to work and operate uh, together, that we have a real exchange. Um, and using the word exchange, of course, I also indicate that it's a good idea to make it a two-way street. Um, um, but pr in print, uh, I mean, in, in general terms, uh, I'm very much in favor of, of such uh, exchange and uh, 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 Georgians going abroad to get education is an excellent idea. Thank you. Uh, Hello. Teona uh, Gasviani from Ivana Jovakishvili Tbilisi State University. Uh, this is your fourth and uh, the third visit of North Atlantic Council to Georgia. And my question is, how does NATO assess the progress of reforms in Georgia? Thank you. Actually, for, my, for me personally, it's my fifth visit uh, to Georgia because I also visited Georgia as the then Prime Minister of, of Denmark. And I mention it because it leads to uh, the answer uh, of, of your question. When I have a look at Georgia uh, over this period uh, of time, from my first visit many years ago um, till now, I can uh, safely say that uh, Georgia has uh, made huge progress. Uh, a lot of reforms uh, have been um, uh, carried through. Um, so my overall assessment uh, is uh, very positive, and this is also the reason 
uh, why I stated uh, in my speech this morning that uh, Georgia has moved closer to NATO. But I added that there is still work uh, to do, uh, but the achievements of the past should just be an encouragement uh, to continue uh, on, on that path. So the brief answer is you have made huge progress. Thank you. Um, hello, uh, Sandro Samadvegishvili, Georgian Institute of Public Affairs. Uh, Mr. Secretary General, you have already answered part uh, of my question. I will ask, uh, ask you the, the second part of it. Uh, so, uh, it has been repeatedly stated that Georgia will become a member of NATO, and even during today's speech, you have mentioned several. Uh, requirements that should be fulfilled by Georgia in order to become a member of NATO. Um, my question is to which extent the standards uh, for Georgia are higher as compared to the other membership aspirate countries uh, due to the military and political conflict with the Russian Federation. So it's external aspect of uh, uh, Georgia in order to become a member of NATO. Is, is this an issue? or not. So is our way longer to, to NATO because of the problems with the Russian Federation? Thank you. My answer, my answer is very clear. This is not an issue. There is no double standard. Um, the requirements for Georgia are exactly the same as requirements for other uh, aspirant uh, countries. Um, Let me add to this, I started by saying this is not an issue. And therefore, I would like to, to add to, to, to this answer that it's not for Russia uh, to interfere uh, with NATO decisions as regards our open door uh, policy. We take those decisions. According to the NATO treaty, Article 10, we may invite European democracies that fulfill the necessary criteria to join our alliance. This is a NATO decision, and no third country can interfere with that. So, um, we adhere to the principle that it is a fundamental right for each and every nation to freely decide its alliance affiliation itself. Actually, um, Russia also subscribed to that principle in uh, an OECE document from 1999. We signed it, uh, Russia signed it. Um, so Georgia can decide herself, other nations can decide themselves, um, and it's for NATO decide, to decide uh, whether uh, we want to enlarge uh, the alliance or not, and on which uh, conditions. No third country can interfere with that. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's very encouraging. State University. As we are aware, in 2014, ISAF mission is to be consummated, and, uh, and Afghan security forces must take over the aim of protection of their country and their security. I'm interested whether Afghan forces participated alongside with ISAF in a joint operation and to what extent they are ready to undertake responsibility. And if the level of terrorism increases in Afghanistan, do you have some alternative plan? Um, I'm pleased to get this opportunity to stress that I'm confident uh, that the Afghan security forces will be able uh, to take full responsibility uh, for the security all over Afghanistan by the end of uh, 2014. Um, already now, um, 
the Afghan security forces are in the lead of more than 90% of our security operations. And very soon, as I mentioned, uh, they will be in the lead of 100% uh, of uh, security operations. That decision has already been made. We marked that event on the 18th of June. Um, so they will take full, uh, they, they will take the lead responsibility all over Afghanistan, um, and we have seen them handle recent security incidents uh, in, a, in a very professional manner. Uh, you will have uh, heard about uh, recent uh, spectacular Taliban attacks uh, in Afghanistan. Um, the fact is that the Afghan security forces uh, handled those incidents without active participation uh, of uh, ISAF troops. ISAF uh, acted in an advisory role, um, but it was for uh, the Afghan security forces to actually handle uh, uh, the, these uh, security incidents. And we were impressed uh, by uh, what we saw. Um, actually, uh, during one, one of my visits uh, to Afghanistan, I had the opportunity to personally um, uh, see uh, Afghan Special Operation Forces in action. And I was also very impressed by what I saw. Uh, so I feel confident that by the end of 2014, the Afghans will be able uh, to take full responsibility uh, for the security. Uh, but of course, they will still need advice, uh, assistance, training, and, and this is the reason why we will establish a training mission uh, from uh, 2015. Um, let me just conclude by, by saying that you shouldn't be surprised to see more spectacular attacks uh, in, in Afghanistan during the coming uh, month. Um, <clears throat> uh, it is part of the Taliban uh, strategy uh, to, let's say, give the perception uh, that the security situation uh, in Afghanistan uh, is unstable. But the fact is <clears throat> that 80% of uh, the attacks take place in areas where only 20% uh, of the Afghans uh, live. Um, so overall, over a period of years, we have seen an improved security situation. Uh, but I think during this fighting season, you will see a number of uh, spectacular uh, Taliban attacks but they will not change uh, uh, the overall um, uh, security uh, situation. Um, the Afghan security forces are very strong and will be able to take full responsibility by the end of 2014. Thank you very much. One more question from this side, yes. And one more over there. There's a young lady who was asking for, for, for quite a long time. Yeah. Well, good afternoon, sir. I'm cadet at the National Defense Academy of Georgia. The global ongoing issues emphasize the effectiveness of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization in uh, world security affairs. Uh, from your point of view, sir, what is the main reason for NATO to, to be so successful? The reason is that it is the world's strongest, strongest military alliance. So first and foremost, we are successful because we have at our disposal uh, the most advanced, the most effective um, military equipment. But on top of that, we have established structures that make uh, cooperation very effective and we saw that uh, when NATO took 
responsibility for uh, the operation in Libya to implement the United Nations uh, Security Council resolution to protect the Libyan people against attack. Um, NATO allies decided that the best way to implement that Security Council resolution was to use NATO uh, as the instrument um, to protect uh, the Libyans against uh, attack. And in a very short time, actually six days, uh, we took the decisions, um, stood up um, the operation. Uh, and the reason why we could do that is that NATO has established military command structures. We have a standing <clears throat> military control and command uh, structure, uh, which makes it possible uh, for NATO allies, and by the way, also partners, uh, to plug in uh, and, and rapidly establish uh, such uh, an operation. And furthermore, we have a NATO uh, council that provides the political oversight, the political control uh, with uh, uh, such uh, an, an operation. So this combination of um, modern, effective military capabilities, a standing command structure, and a political body uh, to provide trans political transparency and control, all these elements make our alliance uh, the most effective defense alliance uh, in the world. I wouldn't hesitate to, to use uh, the word um, a peace movement, that NATO is uh, the world's most successful peace movement because it's not only a military alliance. Uh, since NATO was established in 1949, we have been the guarantor of uh, peace, stability, and security in the Euro-Atlantic uh, area for now more than 60 years. It's the longest period of peace in the history of Europe. That's why NATO is also an efficient peace movement. Thank you. Uh, the lady over there. Yes. Sue Bolish. Argin, that we know. Okay. Just one second. State University. I am interested. What will be the role of Georgia if Georgia, if she exceeds to NATO? What will be the role of Georgia if, NATO, if Georgia exceeds to NATO, and what uh, changes we must? What will be the role of NATO if Georgia becomes member of NATO? And what legal changes must be carried out in Georgia to bring Georgia closer to NATO standards? Yeah, as, as regards uh, bringing um, uh, Georgia closer to uh, NATO standards, we, we are working on that uh, within um, the, the NATO Georgia uh, Commission, <clears throat> as I have mentioned, uh, that's about uh, military or defense and security uh, reforms. Um, it's about reforms of the judiciary. Uh, it's about sustaining uh, democracy uh, in the country, just to mention something. So um, some of it will require legislation, some of it um, uh, determined uh, policies. Now, um, once um, uh, Georgia has entered uh, NATO once uh, in, in the future, um, we would expect from all uh, NATO allies uh, that uh, they live up uh, to uh, NATO uh, requirements, uh, that is, uh, that they uh, continue to uh, modernize and transform uh, their uh, uh, armed uh, forces, um, that they invest sufficiently uh, in the modernization uh, of uh, military uh, equipment, um, and politically, um, allies 
uh, contribute uh, through participation uh, in, in, in consultations uh, in uh, the NATO uh, Council. Um, the North Atlantic Council meets uh, every week. Uh, it is a body uh, that takes decisions. It is a body that creates a forum for consultations uh, among uh, allies, and we expect uh, from allies that they contribute. Uh, in a constructive way to such consultations and such decision making. Um, and let me just, um, on a concluding note, stress that all decisions within NATO are made uh, by consensus. Uh, that is, uh, it requires a consensual spirit <laughs> to participate because otherwise uh, the alliance uh, can't uh, function uh, effectively. Um, uh, but I'm pleased to see that uh, allies uh, today uh, work in that consensual spirit uh, and uh, make it possible uh, for NATO to take decisions um, uh, and uh, pr provide uh, effective defense and protection of our populations. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very sorry, uh, ladies and gentlemen, but the uh, Secretary General has a very tight schedule, and there's a true European who is following this schedule, so we have to finish with our questions. And I, no, just a moment. Uh, first of all, I would like to tell you that uh, Secretary General has a blog, he has got uh, a Twitter account and a Facebook page, and if you have on any questions, you can inquire again. And I would like very much to thank you, Secretary General, for your uh, wonderful address, for your enlightening and sometimes even encouraging answers to our questions. And uh, in the end, I would like to give the floor to the uh, director of the National uh, Library. Uh, he would like to present you a book in Georgian or in English, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you.